Hello, my name is Yulis Patez and I head up the commercial property department. I'd like to talk to you today about the steps that you should undertake in order to prepare a commercial property for sale to ensure that it goes through as smoothly as possible. Having all the information available to the buyer at the outset will reduce the likelihood of any delays or complications at a later stage in the transaction. You should contact your lawyer in order to set up legal pact so that this is ready to be issued as soon as the heads of terms are agreed. In that pack, you will need to show evidence of title, which hopefully can be done by obtaining a copy of the title from the land registry. If the land is unregistered, then copies of the unregistered deeds will need to be provided. As part of the legal pack, you will also need to provide an energy performance certificate, which your commercial agent should be able to organise. Once the terms have been agreed, then the draft contract will be issued and sent to the buyer solicitors, which will state the agreed price and the details of the parties and any specific terms that have been agreed. As part of the pack, the buyer will normally ask for commercial property standard inquiries. These are industry standard inquiries and are very comprehensive. They will ask you to provide information in relation to matters such as the plan and history of the property, the condition of the property, the VAT position, the position of capital allowances and details of any existing tenants. To avoid any delays in progressing the sale, you should try and gather as much information as you can at the early stage so that the replies and any ancillary information can be provided to the buyer's solicitor at the outset. To some extent, the buyer should and must rely on their own inspection of the property and they will usually be recommended to carry out their own survey and searches as to the condition of the property. Under the control of asbestos regulations, you are legally obliged to have carried out an asbestos survey to identify any asbestos used in the construction of the property and where there is any to provide a plan showing how this should be managed. Unless the date of construction indicates there is no asbestos present in the property, you will have to provide the buyer with an asbestos survey. If this has not been carried out, the buyer may accept that they will have to carry out the survey or it may become a condition of the contract that you provide the survey prior to completion or even exchange. You would then need to negotiate who's liable for the costs, if any, in dealing with the recommendation for removal or management of any asbestos found. You will also need to confirm if you've elected to waive the VAT exemption that applies to commercial property. This will be important to the buyer as they'll want to know if VAT is payable on the purchase price and they'll want to see a copy of the election. You may be selling your freehold subject to existing leases. If so, the contract should provide for this and you will need to consider assigning the benefit of any rent deposit deeds or other ancillary documents. You should also consider what if any continual obligations you may have as a landlord under those leases and seek a release in the contract. You will need to make sure all rents are paid as at the date of completion and if there are any arrears or existing breaches of the covenant by the tenants, then these should be disclosed to the buyer. So as you can see, there are a number of steps you can take to prepare the property for sale in anticipation of agreeing those heads of terms. If you require any further information or assistance, please don't hesitate to contact me at theorders.betes at thackerywillips.com. Thank you for listening.